Today we are at Penn State Erie, the Behrend College, and we are in the John M. Lilly Library on campus, and right now we're actually in the archives room, uh, where we have a collection of documents, artifacts, photographs related to uh, the Behrend family, Ernst and Mary Behrend, and uh, documents related to the Hammermill Paper Company, which they were the founders of, for many years was located here in Erie. The Barron family had come from Germany. They were very successful paper makers. And the name of their paper mill was called Hammermüller. When they came here to Erie, they named it Hammermill, a takeoff on the German. Well, there were really th several reasons why Erie was chosen. Uh, first of all, paper production takes a lot of uh, water. And what better place for water than on the shores of Lake Erie, one of the Great Lakes. So they had access to a large amount of water. Uh, the other thing that appealed to them was our location between the Midwest markets of Cleveland and Chicago, but still close to the eastern markets of New York, Philadelphia, Boston. So they liked, they liked the location. Uh, and the third thing that they liked was access to uh, forests in Pennsylvania, the Great Lakes, and into Lower Canada. The first paper production was in 18, December of 1899, and by 1905, records show that they had 520 employees. In the 1920s, they had over 1,000 employees. Uh, by, by World War II, they had around 1,500. The economic impact was, was significant. They did experience more difficult times in the 1930s. Ernst tried as hard as he could not to lay people off. He cut down the, the number of shifts or the time of the shifts that workers worked so people were working part-time rather than being laid off. So he, he really was someone who looked after the well-being of his employees. The Hammermill Paper Company is noted for several innovations in regard to paper making. In the 1930s they were the very first company to develop what was called zero graphic paper, which we now refer to and know as photocopy paper. Uh, they did that at the request of the company that later became known as Xerox Corporation. They also developed a patent that had to do with the watermarking of paper. Patent that used rubber parts instead of metal parts uh, led to greater efficiencies. So this is the actual patent office model for the watermarking device that Hammermill received back in 1902. The importance of it was that it found a way by using rubber surfaces rather than metal to keep the paper from tearing when the watermark was applied uh, in the paper making process. The reason the paper was tearing was because they were using wood pulp instead of rag content. So when they made that switch, which was more economical, uh, it created a problem with the watermarking process. So anyway, this was their, this was their solution. They were the first to, to devise that method. Finally, they were the first company, paper company, to use all hardwoods in the making of writing paper. Before that, only softwoods had been possible. In 1912, Hammermill Paper used three innovations, kind of in combination, to change the way they marketed their paper. Up to that time, companies would come to them, other paper companies, and ask that their watermark be put in the paper. So for instance, Busy Bee Bond would be sold by some company, and they would have to put in the Busy Bee watermark and run so much paper. And then the Robin Hood company watermark would need to be put in the next run of paper. So they were switching things in and out, very inefficient. Well, they got the idea, what if they sold Hammer Mill Bond? And the way they did this, they, they developed a system of agents where, who were franchised. And through those agents, people would purchase Hammer Mill Bond. The reason the agents were eager to sell the paper was because at the same time, Hammer Mill promised that they would do a national advertising campaign and continue it. And this had never been done before in the paper industry. Starting in May of 1912, they ran their first magazine ad uh, for Hammer Mill Bond. And they continued to do that. And they advertised in Time and Business Week and Collier's. All the big magazines of the day carried these ads for Hammer Mill Bond, which made the agents happy because it helped them sell the product. Ernst Behrend is looked back on as an innovator in terms of how he treated his employees. His motto, the company motto, was teach, don't boss. 
and that reflected his vision of creating a, a friendly environment. And this was, he backed it up with uh, the use of paid vacations, uh, sick leave, bonuses to hourly employees, uh, all at a time when these were not common. Uh, it was more common for the, the relationship between the employer and the employee to be hostile. And Ernst worked very hard to try to eliminate that. Uh, another thing that worked uh, in that regard was the formation, uh, the publication of the Hammermill Bond in 1917. It was one of the first company magazines that ran for many, many years. And uh, the employees were encouraged to read it. And it had news about, news about uh, new employees, you know, uh, comings and goings, promotions. Uh, it also focused on uh, substantial articles related to paper making, uh, informative uh, things that employees could use, new technical news about paper making. Um, and it pushed this issue of safety. Ernst and his managers were big on trying to, to maximize employee safety. Uh, so all of these things taken together show how he was a, uh, uh, a man who was truly committed to fostering uh, a good spirit between employer and employee. The company never left Erie. Uh, what it did, it eventually closed. Uh, in 1987, it was purchased by International Paper Company. Things kind of went downhill after that, and by 2001, the plant closed. Uh, at the time, it employed about 750 people. So there were, there were jobs lost. That was a difficult time. You can still buy Hammer Mill Bond, but it's uh, under the auspices or ownership of uh, International Paper Company. We think people can take away from this the fact that we have a collection of an important American company and documents related to American industry at that time, specifically paper making. We hope people will come and use it.